Um, so when I meditate, oftentimes there's, um, um, I, I have kriyas and there's sort of shaking of the body and a kundalini movement and, um, and like breath of fire that happens. And I, I try to relax and, and breathe more into that, especially around this area. Um, and that seems to help. Um, but are, are there some other practical tips to allow the energy to move more freely? When you say when there is a breath of fire, do you mean kumbhaka or are you versed, oh, versed in... Like, like shaking like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, you said breath of fire. Yeah, that, that's just like, like I know from yoga, that's kind of similar to that shaking and, and breathing. You, you, you breathe like that? Yeah, it's kind or of like this, yeah. like the shaking of the mm -hmm. and then, yeah. Okay. It's, good, it's all very good. All these kriyas are very good, they're all beneficial. Sometimes people say, oh, I, you know, like, I don't need kriyas, I don't, you know, like, I can go do without kriyas. But, you know, kriyas, uh, what it means is that it, it's a movement. The word kriya, it's action, movement. So it's like the way, the way we've contracted to this contracted state of consciousness through Kriyas, in the same way we expand. So it's a re reversal. That process is just in reverse. And the reason why I've asked you to specify what kind of breath, what kind of, you know, you called it a breath of fire. And I, I mean, I know them in Sanskrit. You know, this one pranayama which is called, known as Bastrika. It's very fast extremely, exceptionally fast when you breathe, you know. And there are also other forms, that are different forms of kumbhaka and kapalabhati, you know, like different pranayamas. And when that happens, it's a celebratory moment. So I would not have an attitude as that, let's say, there is this spontaneous breathing unfolds, right? And your body starts to breathe. It's not to be afraid, never to be afraid. In fact, the more you relax into it, and if you will be, then the body would be um, breathing even faster or in a kind of unknown to you fashion. Just follow that, fall into it even more. Keep falling into it, no resistance, no like just don't do anything that is like, don't try that because the Kundalini is intelligence itself. When, some, when Kriyas happens, this is the supreme intelligence at work. Sooner we start to introduce certain kind of like, okay, I'm meant to direct that process, okay, I'm going to raise my consciousness, I'm going to send Kundalini through the roof. Don't do that. I've tried and it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, because you cannot, you know, you, you cannot uh, jump out of yourself. So I'm just like, I understand your question is specifically to that, but in advance, let's say. Moreover, sometimes breathing, the spontaneous pranayamas, can lead to the suspension of breath. And I spoke about it during the conference, in the informal gatherings. It is very important that you are aware that there could be a moment when you will be either kind of like the breath will completely subside, subside on the point of suspension, which in a way is so gentle and so subtle that you wouldn't even worry about that. At some point you might catch yourself, my God, I don't breathe, and it's so wonderful, you know. The diaphragm may move still, up and down, ever so gently, but there's no incoming and outgoing breath. It's at suspense completely. The breath has subsided and at a point of suspense. It's a marvelous moment. Physiological condition to experience unity. Right and left hemispheres of the brain, you know, sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, all merged in that. So that, so to, so to speak, nothing to worry about. 
However, sometimes the breath could be arrested on inhalation or on exhalation. Traditionally, it is known as puraka and rikaka, right? When the breath is arrested at the point of inhalation, your tummy could often be swelled because the diaphragm has expanded, you know? Like I drew my eye, yeah? my, my air, you know, like the air goes in and out. And you might feel as if you're being suffocated. One may feel as if, like, literally, the breath, I cannot breathe, you know, not to be afraid. Because you're not going to, obviously, um, suffocate, but these are supreme locks, okay? The body performing that spontaneous lock, just as body can perform during the you know, spontaneous, these kriyas can facilitate certain bandas, certain locks. In the same way, it can actually lock the breath pattern. When that happens, you just need to allow and relax into it, knowingly that it's part of the process. After maybe one minute, maybe three minutes, you will start breathing again. But you might be granted a nirvikalpa samadhi, you know, like in pure state, because when there's no breathing like that, you know, it's a prof there's also real rekindling and awakening of latent areas in the, in the cortexes and in the brain. You know, it might be accompanied with a tremendous light as well, not like flashes of light, but that beautiful kind of very expansive phenomenon. Likewise, on exhalation, you know. So just to know, because I know cases when, like even a couple, you know, like one of them in that state and kind of, and the husband start, oh, pardon me, the husband starts to wake up his beloved out of that state because it just doesn't look very pretty maybe, you know. Looks a bit, but nothing to be afraid. That is a unique science, you know, and the Kundalini, she is the mistress of all pranayamas. So, as far as that question, you know, so just do not try to do anything, there is nothing to try, just allow more, relax into it more. Um, and, and it seems like um, that the more that I get into uh, sort of jhanic states or, or intense concentration states, that the more that happens. So should I, um, should I try to get more into those intense concentration states like as much as possible? Is that? Or, uh, sure. No, I, I understand. Yes. If you can just try to step out of that, of the picture. It's like, you know, you see like, Okay, something is happening, right? And it's spontaneously happening. And maybe there is a tendency, or maybe you read it somewhere, someone told you, you know, like, oh, if you then at that point go straight to your third eye, you might become one with Shiva or something. You know? Let's just, just allow, each stage allow that. You know, each Kriya has validity. I cried and laughed for no reason for a long time. And, you know, and just like, and these are kriyas, you know, these are emotional kriyas. And I breathed, for two years I, there was no meditation. Each time I would sit down, spontaneous breathing will unfold immediately. It was embarrassing. You know, you go somewhere and it's like sit among friends and to eat meal. And instead of like, you know, closing your eyes for a little grace and suddenly you start breathing. It's like, oh my God, this guy can't stop yoga even when he comes, goes out, you know. And so just allow, you know, that allow allowances, you know, that trying, I don't like that word, trying, you know. And the true miracles happen when we stop trying, that's what I mean, really. <laughs> I hope that doesn't make sense. Uh, well, it, it feels like a 
should do something, but I guess I'll just <laughs> go and meditate and, like, and open to whatever is there. So, uh, so and, and I, I don't know how to start trying. <laughs> sure, yeah, I, I understand. There, it's a conditioning. It's also a conditioning, right? I, I, have to, I ought to try something. Just a couple of days ago, I spoke to a man who had awakening 19 years ago with no spiritual background whatsoever, no religious practice whatsoever, nothing, you know? But he experienced the most profound awakening, not knowing, you know, and this, all this, like, and only a year and a half ago, he learned what happened to him, you know? It's just an example, just an example that he wasn't trying anything, you know? It just happened, happened on its own. It could, it could happen. You see, so, and sometimes this trying, you know, that this miraculous is at work, that miracle itself is at work. So, when Kriyas take place, I, I want to just emphasize one more time, it's a very subtle process. Each Kriya is unique. You, the body is being freed, the system is being freed, nervous system. You know, the emotional body, you know, like mental, everything is being freed of conditioning. So whenever we try something during that process, we always bring that subtle interference into it. You see? Like, you know, like, for example, I want to read scriptures in that state because I want to educate myself. I want to be like really knowledgeable. So as I start reading scriptures, obviously the scriptures came into this world because of vibrations of Shakti in the first place. You know, she is the author and Shakti is alive here and I'm in, that, in the midst of that process. Instead of understanding what scriptures say, I'm in a rapturous state of bliss. So I'm like, uh, all I want is to go into that state of absorption, you know. But my mind tells me, no, read, you know. And so like, I, okay, let me read. And then I, it's like, what's more important here? Who is educating who? You see what I'm talking about? I think I understand that. Sure. <laughs> Okay, no, quick, quick question, James. Just like, uh, I'm happy to hear you talk about the, the importance of the dealing with the conditioning and all of that. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of um, the non-dual wisdom and psychotherapy conference that's been going on about 10 years, 12 years now. Uh, we worked with Sam in the initial forming of that conference that you were at. And um, so I'm always happy to hear the teacher address that acknowledge it instead of sort of dismissing it and saying, oh, it's not that important to deal with the condition, illusion, illusory um, individual ego. Um, I had a lot of shaking been going on for about five years. And uh, the medical doctors can't agree with whether it's Parkinson's disease or Lyme disease or any kind of disease at all. It's pretty atypical. Um, and I'm wondering if you have anything to say. Work with people who have shaking uh, that looks like Parkinson's disease, or they've been um, diagnosed with that, and um, whether um, Kashmir Shai disease addresses that diagnosis. In, in mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like I'm worried. It's going to be. I will wrap it up very quickly because. I'm I can see that uh, James made a sign that I'm running the risk to speak blasphemy here, right? But I don't believe, and the platform on which I stand, and what I understood throughout this, throughout this whole process, that anything that can, medical authority, medical, basically, um, the medicine as it is known today can have any explanations on this process. So to me, it is everything, it's only Shakti behind it. You see, so it's a completely different 
perspective to start with. It could be then viewed from the medical perspective. And let us not forget, in the current culture, Kundalini is being pathologized and will always be and will continuously be pathologized until we'll have a collective understanding of what really is happening. You know, because we still, we, Western culture have departed from a true meaning of medicine a long time ago. Not just in recent decades, I'm not talking about big pharma here. The very tenets ten of Western medical system lost its essence. It's no longer Hippocrates, you know. So we need to come back to holistic understanding, to view even these diseases, so-called diseases, as Parkinson, Alzheimer, dementia, or anything, anything that is now like, you know, because let's face it, I don't know, it, who was that? Carl Jung, who suggested a long time ago that probably 70% of what has been dubbed as schizophrenia is just a cases of Kundalini, of which the West had nearly no idea at the time. You know? So, we need to have another approach. This is why, and to answer your question more directly, more specifically, did I work with people? I cannot even begin to view it from a different perspective because Shakti is really that which moves the matrix itself, you see? It orchestrates absolutely all processes. So this is why maybe we need to have a completely, we need to make a move towards the direction where medicine goes back to the time when the whole totality was encompassed. Cosmology, mineralogy, you know, everything. Not viewing human being just as isolated matter, you know, and something like lurks in the dark as mind. I don't view it like that. They are planets, as you yourself, you, you know, you studied with Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi, you know very well that a lot to be taken into consideration here, not just what is happening locally. So this is how I view it. And, sh and shaking is a beautiful process. You know, it, it's once we understand that and fall into that, it's a very different perspective. Very different perspective. Thank you everyone for being here. Really, really for supporting this event from the bottom of my heart. Jai Gurudev.